she's coming out, she's coming out, she's coming out. It's there. Oh. Hello, and I'm going to be trying to be doing the videos a little bit more regularly in the future. Uh, this one isn't too late for my other one, but I'm going to try and get them more regularly. I uh, don't know what the interval will be, but just regularly. Um, this was requested, semi-requested. It was actually done in a letter, and then I thought I would expand... A uh, question was done in a private message, and I thought I would expand on it to make a video. Uh, how to have a platform character and be able to switch characters. This would be useful in a lot of different puzzle type platformers or if you want to make a platformer that's co-op but you want some single player too. Um, and you can do that actually. Uh, I actually find it's really useful if you have uh, joypads and you can get multiple people on the same screen. Um, even have a multiplayer like scrolling platform shooter game that was pretty cool uh... just took a lot of joy pads um, so it starts off basically you need your level and two characters and you switch between the characters and i'm going to show you how to switch between the characters first and then i'm going to show you how i did this specific one um, hey Cam, the way camtasia records um, so, uh, if you just if you already have some really good movement code and you have multiple characters and you just need to switch between them like this guy did, I'm going to show you that first. Uh, all you really need to do is you put in your button. I put in it as Shift, and then you have uh, in the create event you have your default character have selected equals true, and your non-default character uh, have selected equals false, and it's just a boolean variable and when you hit shift or release shift you have if select equals true then selected equals false else selected equals true uh... so now they'll switch and they'll both have the event at the same time when you hit shift the problem with this is you need to implement it in your code now it's actually pretty easy to do uh... i have some basic movement code right here this is the movement code i actually am not using that anymore uh... this is the actual movement code that would be in the normal game and you put if selected equals true around it and this part is only if you're doing what I'm doing the platform if you just want if you let's say you have a maze game or a different style game that isn't or a top-down shooter or something then you wouldn't need uh, this right here this only attains to platformers and when you have need a character to follow um, so you have your movement code, whatever movement code you have, and you just put if select equals true around it. So you just put that for all the code that you want to be uh, individual. Now, if you want, if you're doing a top-down shooter and you have like three guys and you switch between them with shift, and you want to have them all shoot at the same, t like at a certain target where you're pointing and rotate and stuff, you don't want to put the if selected around that. They'll all do that and they'll just follow the guy who's moving so they won't move on their own but they'll shoot on their own uh, if you know what I mean um, I'll sh kinda give you an example of that in a sec and then the same thing for all of your other movement code for instance move right so you have your move code and then you put the if select equals true around it and then you have some things like jumping or in other cases it would be shooting you have your jump code and you put in an uh, you have your let's say you had your shoot code um, you could say if um, ammo is greater than zero instance underscore create x comma y comma bullet and then uh, oh wait And then you could have ammo uh, minus equals one, and then there you go. Oh wait, alarm. And you really get the point. You'd have to put in alarm and stuff. But there's your basic shoot code. And then in the shoot code, you would put uh, that's for time. So that's your default shoot code. In that, you just add in. Uh, 
and and select equals true if you want to have it only shoot if it's selected or if you don't want to have it shoot if it's selected you would leave this uh, by itself the shoot code which I'll get rid of and you would change the jump code as if you didn't want to like change jump code so anytime you only want the selected character to do something you just put the if select equals true code around it now here's a special exception where I want it to do the thing but I want it to lag behind uh, you'll notice in a lot of platformers when you have a character following a character if you jump the second character will lag behind a little bit as if it's following it's slow to pick up or react type of thing so if you want to do something like that then if selected equals false alarm whatever one equals three three steps is a good uh, lag time it's enough to let you see it but not so much where it would be a hindrance and then in alarm you put the regular jump code so it's the regular jump code and everything with that um, so now I'm gonna go over the special platform code um, for the special platform code you basically use your default stuff um, and you in your create event you're gonna have to put instance underscore create and then uh, like x minus 48 if you're using 32 by 32 sprites comma y comma pl2 or whatever your second character is and you can actually use this uh, for more than one character if you are using this for more than one character the way that you do that is instead of selected equals true you have selected equals one um, and you would say for all the code that you want it to do and it's like you have select equals one and then when you want to select number two you have select equals two and all selected uh, character two's code would be if selected equals two and you would also have to make it a global variable so you just have global dot selected equals zero and then or uh, one rather and then two for character two, three for character three, four for character four, and you would just put like in this code instead of if selected equals true, if selected equals one, two, three, four, whatever your character is, and of course once again global, and uh, that'll make sure that you can have all the different characters. Now, if you want to have uh, the uh, platform guys like I have, uh, you're going to need your all platform code set up already to create the other character behind you which would mean x minus whatever so mess with the number 48 to see when it's close and remember that number and then um, you select it is already true because this is character one now in alarm one I already went over the lag effect with jump you put your in, in your jump code right there in step uh, let's see your gravity code no you don't need to do anything with step wall you don't need to do anything with wall it's mostly just left and right um, if selected equals false what you do is if x is greater than or equal to player 2.x plus 48 with uh, the plus 48 you don't really need to worry about that's more an aesthetic look thing I'll explain the logic just with the PL uh, 2.x um, and whatever number you put uh, here you need to put in your uh, left and right code here. So the reason why it's saying if x is greater than or equal to PL2.x is because this is when you're moving left. So your character at this point, because it's following it, it means it was going right. Right now you're to the left of the person you're supposed to be following. You're behind the person you're supposed to be following. Now imagine that the person you're following turns around and starts coming towards you. You're not going to immediately turn around and start going the same way they are. You're going to wait for them to pass, go a good distance or a little distance, and then restart following them. So this is what that checks. If X, only when we're going left and the person we're following is far enough to the left of us, will we then start following and go left? So that's how we do it. Greater than would mean that we're farther, we're to the right. And then it's just default move code uh, x minus equals four. Four would be your speed. Then we have your right code. Um, and we have the same thing uh, if select equals false. If x is less than pl2.x minus 
48 or whatever your number is because now we're to the left and we should be to the right so we need to be uh, far enough to left or is it the other way around we are to the right we need to get to the left that's the way it needs to go and then we have your default move code and last but not least we have press up which has um, the jump code and then we have if selected equals false, alarm 1 equals 3. So 3 is our lag behind and we do that. And one thing i like to mention is jump limit. Uh, for jumping, you just use a jump limit and it's a, instead of checking if there's an object below you because this solves a lot of problems and it also lets you double jump really easily. Uh, what happens is if jump limit is greater than 0, then you do your jump code and jump limit minus equals 1 so that and when you collide with a wall jump limit equals two so that'll let you uh, double jump every time you land on the wall uh... it'll go ahead and let you double jump or it'll reset you so if you jump once and then land it'll set it as two and if you jump twice you double jump and land it'll set it as two so it works alright so just a really really blank room and you'll notice that when i um, hitting my key right right now and both characters are evenly moving right. Now if I move left, you notice the green guy doesn't move. And when I get far enough over, he starts moving again. It kind of seems a little fluid. And what I like is a really fluid movement is in jumping, how it lags behind just enough. And when we double jump, there's a little lag there. Wow, that double jump physics is like... I should have paid more attention to V-speed and stuff. Alright, so that works. Now we're going to hit Shift. And now Green's in charge. And the code works for that, too. And, um... I forgot to mention one thing. Oh, wow, that looks pretty cool. Um... For your second character, you're going to need to change some code... Um, for left and right, you're going to have to put player1.x instead of player2.x and uh, player1.x instead of player2.x in the left and right code. Uh, and I do believe that is it also. So you can pretty much duplicate and you also don't have that create player2 line in create event and selected has to be equal to false. So those are the changes from player 1 to player 2. You can pretty much right click player 1 to hit duplicate and just make those little changes and then it's all set. So I uh, hope that helped. Uh, it's a little more advanced platform programming for characters. It has a lot of cool gameplay potential and switching characters is useful in a lot of different games, especially uh, puzzle and party and adventure games, so that'll be cool. Um, so Thanks for watching. If you have any requests, please post them. And also, if you're working on any projects, please give me some links to those. I'd like to see what people are up to. And if it's any good, I'll even do a shout out for it. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching.